Hey guys, thanks for joining us for another episode of Nikon TV and we are going to bring to you all the explosive news that's happened in the last 24 hours. Nikon dropped a bomb the other day by putting an announcement about a whole bunch of new products which we are going to talk about today. So let's just get straight to it and talk about the brand new camera that Nikon has just announced. This in my hand is the brand new Nikon Z50. And uh, if you haven't heard about it, this is our third Nikon mirrorless camera in the Z family. So the Z50, again, it is a brand new mirrorless camera and we're gonna get into the specs in just a second, but I, it has also been launched with two brand new lenses that accompany this camera. And that is the DX 16 to 50 millimeter pancake kit lens as well as the uh, DX 50 to 250 millimeter DX lens for the brand new Z format. So again, I, the keyword there was DX. So this is the DX format into the new Z family. And for those of you that are travel photographers, for those of you that want to travel light, this could be your ideal travel companion so light it's actually lighter than uh, some of our lightest weight DSLRs such as the D7500 and even D5600. So if you're a, a travel photographer and want to minimize the weight in your bag this is the most one of the most lightweight cameras we've introduced. For those of you creating content for YouTube or Instagram and you want to do self-portraits or just um, vlogging style videos. This now has a flip down screen so you can see yourself exactly what you're doing. If you're a street photographer and just want to be able to have a light, nimble, nimble agile camera um, that you can take everywhere with you without compromising image quality, again, this Z50 is the camera for you. So let's just get right into the specs and what it's all about because I mentioned a couple of things. I mentioned that it was a DX camera for the Z format. So how exactly does that work? Well, the brilliant part about this is, is the mount diameter has not changed. I'm gonna show you a picture right here and you're gonna see effectively that gigantic Z mount on this brand new Z50. But you see right there in the center, that is a DX format sensor. So that is essentially the resolution of a D500 or D7500. I'll just hit you with some of the statistics right off the bat. It's a 20.88 megapixel CMOS sensor going up from 100 to 51,200 in stills mode and can make it up to 25,600 in video mode. So very capable. If you're a D500, D7500 shooter, you'll be familiar with that ISO range it shoots at 11 frames per second with continuous autofocus and continuous auto exposure throughout. As well, it has the brand new IAF that we introduced with the Z6 as well as Z7. And the low light focusing capability of this camera is a class leading negative four EV. Now, again, I just wanna stress the fact that the compatibility with this new format being a DX uh, camera opens up a world of possibilities. I'm going to show you an a, a image right now with this Z50 right next to its brothers, the Z7 as well as the Z6. You see the mount diameter is exactly the same at 55 millimeters and the back flange distance is the same too. So it's going to take advantage of that 16 millimeter back flange distance. So native Z mount lenses such as the 24 to 70, the 50 millimeter, all those S-line lenses will sit right next to the sensor as well as the new 16 to 50 pancake lens. So uh, let's, let's talk about the lens here. Um, this is being introduced with the camera, which by the way, has a magnesium alloy chassis. So the build of this camera is a very high quality build. It has magnesium alloy chassis which, which makes it strong, it makes it rigid, it makes it durable. So again, once if you're, if you're the type of photographer that goes out and travels a lot, this has no compromise in terms of the build quality. Some innovative features we've included now on the back of the camera is that we've streamlined the user interface even more by incorporating touchscreen functions right on the surface of the glass. So we've removed dedicated buttons that were normally associated with zooming in and zooming out and place them adjacent on that gigantic 3.2 inch 
LCD screen, very similar to smartphones nowadays that have these buttons built right onto the surface of the glass. And as you can see right there, all your operations can practically be done with one hand on the right hand side. Very good grip and feel. And if we look at the front of the camera here, it's that uh, familiar Nikon design with a deep and comfortable grip. Now, for those of you that can't really tell by looking at it on screen, let's get a close up shot because I happen to have one in my hand. I'm just gonna give you a tour of the camera right here. It is small, folks. It is small and it is light. And check out that, that lens right there. If I'm just gonna compare it next to a D7500. So this is a D7500, one of the most lightweight DSLR um, DX cameras that we've had. Similar specs in terms of the sensor and their um, ISO range, but if I just show you the bottom profile here, the Z50 with the lens attached is almost as thick as just the body of the D750. When you hold them, and this is just holding it without a lens, it shaves off so much weight, it's, it's 300 grams less than the D7500 um, when you compare just body for body. Now, if you compare it even with a D5600, this again is one of our lightest weight DSLRs. The Z50 is even lighter than the D5600 by some grams. And, and the whole body construction with this brand new pancake lens is what is where the magic happens. I'm just gonna show you a couple of beauty shots here of this new pancake lens here that ships in, in our new um, casing for the Nikkor Z series. Now, when I saw this picture right here, I thought there was a mistake. I thought my uh, friend Jacob might have accidentally cropped part of the lens here, but no, that's actually the lens in its retracted position. It's not cut off. That's how flat that new design of the 60 to 50 millimeter is. That's um, you have to incorporate the DX crop in there. So this on full frame terms is really the equivalent of a 24 to 75 millimeter. You see the aperture right there. It's a variable aperture lens with 3.5 to 6.3. But again, with the electronic viewfinder, you don't sacrifice from a dark viewfinder at 6.3. You can clearly see your image. Now I'm gonna show you another image here right next to an 18 to 55 DX lens, okay? Now look at the thickness of this both of them are in the retracted position and it's practically half the length of one of our smallest lenses, the AFP DX Nikkor uh, 18 to 55. So again, it's a brilliant travel lens. You can fit it in your purse, in your bag with, uh, with taking up very little space. And uh, even with the lens extruded, it is still a compact format and design. So I really love the, the agility of this here. And the next thing we're gonna talk about is the fact that, you know, well, first of all, I'm just gonna show you an image here that it, there is a hood also available for this, given the fact that it is a wide angle lens, we can shade out some of the sun. Now, another exciting news that we announced is at the same time, we have a brand new telephoto lens for this new DX format as well. Taking advantage of the smaller sensor, we can develop this brand new 50 to 250 millimeter telephoto zoom lens that's built again specifically for the Z format. So it sits right next to the sensor. It's lightweight and I have to tell you this is a different design here because the VR is now built into the lenses. Both the lenses that I've just showed you have um, optical stabilization built right into the lens. So again a key difference between the Z50 as opposed to the Z6 and Z7 is that in the Z6 and Z7 the stabilization is built into the sensor. That's what we call IBIS in body image stabilization. Um, in the case of the new Z50, the stabilization is based on the lens. So the IBIS is not built into here. If you were, you can still attach, however, um, S-line lenses such as the uh, 50 millimeter 1.8. You won't have stabilization on it, but if you have uh, the new lenses here such as the 16 to 50 or 50 to 250, you will have stabilization because it's built right into the lens. And we'll just show you a couple of shots here with that new 50 to 250 installed. It's just, it, it, uh, it's a great feel. I'm gonna put mine on right now. And I'm just gonna show you another shot here of say example, the 50 millimeter attached onto the new Z50. So the compatibility options are great throughout this entire format. It's just like putting a full frame FX lens on your D7500 
or a D500, uh, any DX camera, you know you have a 1.5 times crop, you're gonna have the same crop factor here, just multiply it by 1.5, the math is really easy. And you have, uh, say from a 50 millimeter lens, you have it now 75, that extra little bit of crop. Now, what happens if you already have uh, Nikon lens as well. Again, we have the FTZ mount adapter that translates your F mount into the Z mount. So if you have existing F mount lenses, a lot of you out there have them, you can adapt it without compromise onto the Z50. Now this image that I'm showing you here is the 40 millimeter macro lens adapted to the Z50. A lot of you that have DX lenses and that now have Z6 or Z7s, you now have, you, you have the ability to adapt it to the Z6 and Z7, but what you get is a crop and you lose resolution. When you adapt a DX F mount lens onto the Z50, you benefit by getting the full 20, almost 21 megapixels of resolution. Whereas if you incorporated a DX lens and adapted it onto a full frame Z6, you lose a lot of resolution. So there are advantages actually in using the smaller sensor with the higher resolution because you don't sacrifice that resolution when you're using DX lenses. So some important things to consider. Now, again, another important thing to consider is if you are a vlogger, if you are a multimedia creator, if you are a person that likes taking selfies just from within arm's length, we've incorporated a brand new design in this and that is this very angle flip down screen and the beauty of that screen is that we've designed it to mirror the image. So when it flips down, it inverts the image. So what you're looking at is essentially a mirror. You can compose yourself properly, but when it records the image, it, image it's exactly doing it as it's composing you, like, like what we just saw here, okay? So you can align yourself up more predictably because you can see yourself in that mirror image at the bottom of the screen. Uh, you know, it's great for group shots when you don't have a tripod on you. It's great for vlogging if you don't have a tripod on you. Again, the flexibility with this is great if you're a multimedia creator. Also, if you're a street photographer, using that flip down screen allows you to take shots from various angles. You can shoot low without having to look inside of the viewfinder. And because it's so light, you have that one-handed operation with ease. And in terms of connectivity, you can take your stills, your video, and now with the new SnapBridge app, you can even transfer raw files right to your iPhone or Android device and edit it with your favorite editing software. So this is a new development on the SnapBridge app. Very powerful tools now that we have in the Z system and our smartphone apps in SnapBridge. If you're a multimedia creator and you, in addition to your stills and video, also wanna produce quick time lapses, the Z50 inherits all of the awesome functionality that we've introduced now with the Z6 and Z7. You have built-in time lapses, which we incorporate with full sensor readout. So you can have the full sensor and do time lapses full sensor and do 4K video with no cropping at 30 frames per second. We also have slow motion in this as well. So if you're, again, you're a multimedia creator, it's important to be, have that flexibility in frame rates, in resolution, um, and as well having inputs for things like microphones, external microphones. This does have a microphone port built into the side so you can attach something like a stereo ME1 microphone that Nikon makes and um, get better sound. Because the camera is so light, it's perfect for gimbals um, to attach it to there because it's very easy to balance and maintain that balance even when the lens is extruded. It has a very uh, good uh, weight to it because of the, of the design of this new format. I'm really excited about this, this brand new camera because I mean, I've just started to play with it. Um, for those of you uh, curious, it does utilize SD cards now. So you, uh, if you're used to having SD cards from your D5600, your uh, D7500, what, what have you, you can continue to use that on this brand new Z50. Exciting, exciting developments from Nikon. And if you see at the top of the camera here, there is a brand, well, there is a hot shoe port so you can incorporate your favorite flash, whether it be an SB500, um, an SB700, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and here, the, the perfect flash from Nikon, external flash would be an SB500 because it's nice and small and compact, but I'm also gonna show you here if we can get a tight shot up at the top here, typically on the prism of a Z6 and Z7, we've built just the electronic viewfinder, but now on the Z50, we've incorporated, check this out, pop-up flash. 
So the pop-up flash is so practical, it works in TTL, but it also has a manual mode in there as well, so you can adjust your power manually. Very handy, very practical, so you don't necessarily have to have that pop-up flash. While I'm here, I'm also gonna show you the top dial here now has scene modes incorporated into it, just like on a D5600. We have a special effects mode dial as well. Again, this is something uh, that brings the fun into, into, the, uh, into the camera here. You have all these different special effects that we can employ. If you're used to that in, say, a camera like a D5600, you have that here now. Um, so a lot of great enhancements on this camera. I just want to mention as well um, the pricing of this camera right here and, uh, and, the, and the kits that we've incorporated. So um, in Canada, you can get the Z50 body only. MSRP is $1169. I'm going to say that again. It's just over $1,000 for body only at $1169. Now, you can get this amazing pancake lens with it, okay, which I highly recommend if you're gonna, if you're gonna go all out and get the, the smallest, lightest weight system that you can find, you can get the pancake lens with the Z50 for $13.99. Again, this is a game changer in terms of the price offering because it opens it up to, to so many more people in terms of price point and you know, if you're a multimedia creator, like what we're doing right now uh, on our show, we're, we're using two cameras to film this. So now, uh, if, if creating multimedia images or videos like what we're doing right now is much more within people's budget because of the price point of this camera, the dual lens kit, I'll also mention, is gonna have an MSRP here in Canada for $18.79. That includes both of these lenses, okay? the 16 to 50 as well as the 50 to 250. So you have everything from 16 millimeter wide angle covered all the way up to 250 millimeter um, on the uh, lightweight DX format. Now, another one of the bombshell announcements that we came out with that people have been waiting for quite frankly, but we now have precise information on it is the battery grip, the long awaited battery grip for the Z6 and Z7. I have a picture of it for you right here. This is the MB, uh, sorry, the MB N10 battery pack, okay? So uh, the, the battery pack here is compatible with both the Z6 and Z7, and I happen to have it in my hands right now. Um, it feels great in the hand. It actually allows you to put two batteries at the bottom here, so what it requires you to do is to remove the door from the battery compartment. And there's side access here to battery number one, okay? And uh, it draws from slot A first, and then on the other side is battery number two. So you can do hot swapping um, while you have batteries in there. So you see my live view is on right now. As long as I have one battery in there, okay, it's going to maintain the live view. So I can take this other battery out at the same time and it'll just revert to the power in the other battery. The other thing that it can do is there's a, a, a check button here, so you can press this button, and you see that? The green lights light up and tell you how much power um, that you have uh, remaining. So this is a great battery grip, uh, uh, or battery pack rather, that fits comfortably and perfectly onto the Z50 and Z7, sorry, Z6 and Z7 cameras, not the Z50, Z6 and Z7, okay? So that is the MBN10, and uh, that's compatible with the ENEL -E -E 15B battery. Holy cow. Um, start the blooper count on me right now, Mo. So um, we got to keep me honest here. All right, now, back when we announced the new Z series, we're going to shift gears here for a second we came out with a roadmap, and it seems like every couple of months we've been announcing new additions to the Z series. This um, roadmap that we announced uh, specified so many different lenses spanning three years, and one of the lenses that have been ho hotly awaited for the year 2019 is just about to drop. So check out this video, and we'll be back in a couple of minutes.
Wow. Okay, so when we came out with the Z series, that lens was already teased on all the marketing material right off the bat because essentially this is what, this is the moment that we've been waiting for. This is why we created the Z format to be able to harness the, basically the, the, the maximum of what we can create optically wise. And you saw all the different technologies that are incorporated into this premier piece of glass that we are intro now introducing the 58 millimeter. I, I want to get this straight. It's not 1.4. It's not 1.2, it's the 0.95 knocked lens. And we have some beauty shots here of this lens that is going to be available soon. You see there the, uh, the, the LED panel similar to the 24 to 70. It has a gigantic manual focus ring. And this now takes advantage of coatings that we've pioneered now for the Z series, such as the Arneo coating that minimizes ghosting and flare on top of the nano crystal coating. It has, uh, as you can see in that video, it renders point sources of light exquisitely pinpoint sharp and allows us to create or shoot at apertures that we never have been able to do because until this new mount design, we haven't been able to create apertures at this uh, width, at the 0 0.95. So this is, gonna be coming a reality this year, the, uh, the 58 millimeter knocked lens 0 0.95. It will be available in Canada for 10, for essentially I'll, I'll round up by five cents, $11,000, okay? This is a, an exciting moment because this is essentially the top of the line lens that we're, we've come out with. And the practical uh, purposes for people to use it are obviously for portraiture, but it's gonna give you a, a depth and realism that you've never before seen. And you know what? Because we are here at Nikon TV, I have, again, uh, a surprise for you. It is in our vintage Nikon trunks here. And yes, it is. This deserves the white glove treatment, folks. We haven't done this in a while since the 180 to 400. So I gotta whip out the white gloves for this. It's deserved. I'm not worthy of this lens. That's why I gotta put on these white gloves here. I can't believe this is a reality. There it is. This is the 58 millimeter 0 0.95. I don't know what I'm going to do with all that light. Might as well shoot at uh, ISO 2 or something like that. So this is the, the 58 millimeter. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to mount it right now on Z6. Okay. So a lot of you have been wondering what these, you've seen it in pictures and you haven't really seen the scale of it mounted on the camera before. Now, I just wanna make this very clear that this is a, uh, a demo model for trade show. So it's built to scale. It's built um, to the same scale as the production model will be when it comes out. So it's an 82 uh, millimeter diameter on the front ring right there. Um, you're gonna see it has this gigantic manual focus ring, focus ring and you know that it's gonna be the, the climax and precision because I can see right here, the minimum focusing distance is uh, 0 0.5 meters away and right next to it is the infinity logo. So when you do a full rotation of this lens from, point five, from the minimum focusing distance to infinity, you can get such precise focusing from anywhere the, of those distances in between. Now you're also gonna have that readout panel right there that's gonna give you statistics on your focusing distance your aperture, and you'll see here it also has the control ring built into the side. So you have this 0 0.95 that takes full advantage of the Z mount, and it also has a collar, a tripod or monopod collar here at the bottom that will allow you to mount it in a more balanced format. So uh, again, who is this lens for? Again, it's for portrait photographers. You even saw in that video astrophotographers that want to render very uh, sharp point sources of light, but for photographers like this that want to shoot with a, such a blurred out background, it's not uncommon for people to pick up a super telephoto lens, like a 400 millimeter 2.8, and render images that have very, very blurred bokeh in the background, which is what I'm going to show you right ne next right here, you know, um, to do that. But to get to work with 400 millimeters is very unpractical at times. Having the ability to do this 
with 58 millimeter to be closer to your subject to get the faster shutter speeds of 0.95 and allow you to do street shooting like this with ambient light and get the otherworldly bokeh in the background, but get still get sharp images that you get from the Z mount is why we've developed this 58 millimeter. And it's gonna become a reality this year. We're all excited here at Nikon because we've everything that we've heard from our community is when is the 0.95 gonna come out? Everybody knows about it kind of just by osmosis. Um, because uh, everybody has been anticipating this lens. And because this lens is such a monumental achievement for Nikon, we are shipping it in special casing. We were able to acquire some spy footage of the new casing that it's gonna come in. Check this out, it has its own dedicated briefcase here. And we were also able to see what's inside of the case when you open it up it has pre-cut foam developed specifically for this brand new lens even the hood has its own slot but if you were to zoom in and look at the cutout on the foam there's these nice little easter eggs my friend jacob was showing me all the easter eggs on his jeep earlier today but inside of the foam cutout here we actually see the engineering diagrams of the lens assembly with the knocked logo right next to it. So this is, if you're a collector <laughs> of Nikon gear, this is a must have. If you just wanna maximize on the quality of the Z format, this is the lens that we've all been waiting for. It's a legend in the making. So that is it for our time here on Nikon TV, folks. We thank you for tuning in. There's a lot more information on our website. Comment below on all the new announcements today. What are the lenses and bodies that you're most interested to see come out and we'll catch you on our next episode of Nikon TV.